I want us to have a conversation here in studio, and I'll start by introducing my guest, the one seated on my right. Uh, this is uh, Collins Mango. He is a lawyer. Thank you for your time, Collins. We also have Professor George Jacoya, who is an advocate of the High Court. He's also a lecturer at the USIU. Thank you very much for your time. All right, gentlemen. So yesterday evening, we were able to uh, see this sort of like, you know, the, the guidelines and the directions that the Supreme Court would take with this particular petition. And I just want us to start from the fact that NASA uh, was locked out. And Jubilee lawyers argued, among other things, that they were not even part of, um, you know, the election on October 26th. Um, and that's why maybe they should not come in and, you know, be part of this petition. First mm -hmm. of all, your thoughts on this, on, on that uh, decision by the court? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kialo. Mm -hmm. uh, before I say that, I would like to take this opportunity mm -hmm. to send uh, a message of condolences to the families of the four police officers that have died, mm. three in Baringo and one in Bondo. I say this sincerely because I've been a policeman myself before and I know they go through, so I would like to pass this regard to the Inspector General of Police and the families of those officers who have gone. Mm. Now, when it comes to the question that you have asked me, yes, the Chief Justice um, <coughs> nullified the respondents, in this case the nurses, from uh, participating in the matter, and he did not give reasons. He just uh, said, well, we are not allowing you, we are not giving reasons, so I do not want to speculate. You do not want to speculate. Yes, because but I don't know what they have. What, what the the reason. But is there like an implication, considering that NASA had said before that they, you know, th this, they're not really interested in this particular petition this time around? Well, Matt has said outside the courthouse are irrelevant. Mm. They are not even considered when it comes to matters of litigation in court. Mm -hmm. This is an in-house matter that the court has to deal with. So where a party has been enjoined, or a party has been named, or a party has been enjoined as a respondent, then the matter becomes within the armpit of the court to decide. And if they decided, they decided. And the other thing is, even if NASA had said they were not going to be part of it, mm -hmm. then why did they have to send lawyers to court? Mm -hmm. Were they sending lawyers because they had been enjoined uh, in, by John Jomue, the petitioner, and Khalifa? Mm, Khalif, Khalif. Uh, yes, as a respondent. Mm -hmm. Then why did they have to send lawyers to go in there? Mm. What were the lawyers going to participate in? All right, so you're saying maybe from the get-go they were sort of interested in, yes, in, yes. in being part of this. Yeah. All right, Collins, your thoughts on this one. Does it really have an impact that NASA is, has been locked out? Yes, uh, thanks, Betty. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it has. Politically, it has an impact. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, the threshold in, in the petition has now like uh, been reduced in terms of the intensity uh, in the court and in terms of pressure. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm looking at it like in a, from the position that uh, uh, most of the things that uh, NASA could have submitted on have already been uh, said by the petitioners in their petition. Mm -hmm. um, having had the privilege to, to read the petition, really, uh, where NASA was only mentioned was uh, in terms of uh, the withdrawal of a candidature which was already raised in both petitions, uh, Honorable Mouse mm. and John Jomwes. Then uh, another thing was on the political environment uh, in, the, in the cases of the 25 constituencies that the voters didn't get to vote. So um, I think the, the judges uh, in, their, in their decision maybe uh, were trying to uh, look at the, the, day, the day period they have. They mm. have 14 days you know, to have everything done. And uh, in, in, in terms of having NASA as part of the team, and you see they already had about five advocates. Yes. So it could have lengthened the li litigation. Mm. So I think in their consideration, uh, in hearing most of the ruling, they, they said uh, there's nothing much uh, NASA could uh, have added. Mm. And uh, there was no one in particular. You know, NASA is a coalition. Uh, maybe if they could have mentioned Raila Odinga in person, maybe he might have had a case to, to defend himself. But uh, because these are allegations are based on a wider perspective, broad fish, which is NASA, mm. then that is why maybe uh, the court saw it fit not to have them directly respond All to right. the petition. But you're saying politically, it's, you know, it sort of like reduces the intensity this time around. Yes, uh, it reduces the intensity on the, on the petition mm -hmm. itself. And it uh, affirms NASA ground that uh, they have nothing to do with this petition. Mm. And, uh, do they really have nothing? Because the Jubilee lawyers or President Uru Kenyatta's lawyers have, you know, come out in the past to say just a few days ago, actually, that, you know, uh, 
the, the petitioners are surrogates and mouthpieces of NASA. Uh, actually, if you look at uh, Fred Gatia's submission mm -hmm. yesterday, uh, he said the responses by NASA was another petition in itself mm. from, uh, I don't know, paragraph 31 to 100 and something. Mm. It's like NASA in the response were raising other issues and like uh, it's like they were trying to, you know, file another petition through their, their response. Mm. Um, Legally, okay, politically speaking, uh, they, they, they'll say that, uh, you know, they have nothing to do with the petition. But uh, legally, they, of course, have interest, uh, bearing in mind that uh, NASA has insisted on uh, fresh elections in 90 days. Right. Yes. Interesting. All right, coming to you, Professor. One of the things that also uh, happened yesterday is that the court decided to suspend, um, you know, that, that, that petition against uh, Kalonzo Musyoka and Raila Odinga that wanted them... Uh, First of all, they were seeking guidance on whether this particular case about them, you know, committing electoral offences would be heard in the Supreme Court. Um, first of all, when the time comes, right now it's suspended, so meaning that maybe at some point it will go on. Um, is it in the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to hear such a case? I think, in my opinion, it's yes and no. Mm -hmm. But before I answer that question, I would like to know the, the interests of the Institute of uh, Democratic Governance. Governance. Mm. The word is democratic governance. Democratic governance. Under what test did they apply and reach at a conclusion to subpoena to, to subpoena and, 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 and include the names of NASA leaders into that petition? Whose interest were they serving? Mm -hmm. And who are they? It would be very interesting for me to do research as soon as I leave this studio mm -hmm. to, to find out when this institute was constituted, who are the directors, mm. who are the funders, where do they get money to go to court to file the, the court documents, and what interest, whose interest were they serving? Mm. Because what will that information help you? Help yeah, you? Because you if, if it is an interest of governance, mm. then it's an institute of governance. If they have an issue to go to court, yes, they can go to court because the constitution allows them to. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, they are supposed to, they are supposed to preach governance and to make peace within the warring functions. They have no legitimacy in law to go to court to say these people are unfit to govern. Mm. What if they also included Uhuru Kenyatta in their list of mm -hmm. what have you? So mm -hmm. I have a problem with that institute before I answer that question. You have a problem with the institution. Yes. But even as you, as, as you try to understand, you know, even the title, the democratic uh, governance, I mean, yes. whatever their reason touches on the democracy, yep. Of, of this country and the right to, for everybody to, to participate in an election, which is well, in the Constitution. Well, I wonder where they were going to, how they were going to, con to conjugate and uh, tailor the evidence to bring these people's character into dispute, to uh, convince the courts not to allow them to participate. Mm. What criteria, what, under what criteria did they have to. Maybe if they have gone into private prosecution because of what happens in the, happened in the aftermath, right. then probably they would have had some kind of uh, case to, to bring forward because in that, of course, they would have come up and said, okay, NASA leaders' pronouncements made people to boycott the elections. Uh, thereafter, there was violence and people were killed. Mm. There they might have had a case to answer. But going to court to stop these people from practice, mm. I don't see whether there was any logical sense mm. in the, their petition. In the petition. Yeah, maybe just to, yes. to, to, to add on that. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I love the way even um, NASA treated their, their petition. You know, they did not file any response to that petition, and they just uh, raised a, a preliminary <laughs> objection on a point of law. On the simple fact that uh, election petitions should be under Article 140, which is challenging the election mm -hmm. of a president. So these guys come up with a petition, call it a presidential petition, and in their petition, what, what all they're doing is, you know, they're alleging that uh, uh, NASA boycotted, they should be held in contempt of court, you know, they're looking to the character of the principles of NASA. And I think uh, the, the ruling was very sound in law because uh, they, they, they ought uh, to have, actually there's even jurisdictional issues. Um, I remember yesterday, uh, any, any, any advocate will tell you litigation is everything, uh, sorry, jurisdiction is everything mm -hmm. to a litigant. Uh, yesterday, uh, Ahmed Nasir uh, counsel uh, in his submissions uh, opposing the scrutiny uh, challenged the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to, you know, give orders as to scrutiny. Mm. And uh, the same thing uh, with the, the, the petition by IDG. I mean, um, 
first thing will be is the, is the court of uh, first uh, original jurisdiction mm. to, to hear the case, mm -hmm. and uh, whether it should have been a presidential petition. So for me, uh, it was very sound for, for it to be found together with the other applications. Yeah, uh, but it by was suspended. Honorable it was not Kossing. completely. Yes, yes, it was suspended, yes. and it will be given new dates mm. uh, at the at the fre at the registry. Mm. So uh, it does not file under the confines of Article 140, which is uh, to be hard and determined within 14 days. All right. Yes. Uh, to do with uh, the presidential uh, 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 election. Uh, yes, and in addition to what my learned friend has said, mm -hmm. you see, matters to be adjudicated before the court must be ripe. All right. Was that matter ripe? Were there any kind of legitimate expectation? Did they raise any issue to be tried All right. by the courts of law? Did the court have jurisdiction? Was it a court that had original jurisdiction? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't they go to the high court, high court mm. and start it from there? All right. And if it was, if at all, the lawyers were advising them, and of course some of we lawyers, we know how to do, or make easy money mm. going that way. Would that decision, would that petition stand in any sensible court in mm. any other part mm. of the world? In the U.S. it will not stand. It will not even pass the tre threshold. It right. will not even be scrutinized all because right. it, that lacks local standard in terms of, in terms of ripeness. All right, ripeness.